I am an angel. You are a demon. We're hereditary enemies. I was talking last night to Terry Gilliam, who came to our premiere. And Terry had been trying to make Good Omens into a film, into a feature film, for a lot of that 30 years, and failed. And also, Terry Gilliam was the person who, about eight years ago, said to me, you should be making it into television at this point. And he came up and he just said, you, you did it proud. All of the things I would have had to leave out to make a feature film, you got to put in, and it was special and magic. The reason it couldn't be made, I think, was it was too big, too mad, too sprawling. Um, the reason that it could be made now is because we have two things have come together. We have the online platforms, places like, in our case, Amazon Prime Video, which is going to release it all around the world, which also comes with enough money to make it. And you have the advances in graphics and in CGI that allowed us to make it. Um, both the visible CGI of Good Omens, which is a little bit cartoony and which we had an enormous amount of fun with, you know, the idea of, of a flying saucer coming down that's the flying saucer that a 12-year-old would imagine. Um, but in with that, we've also got invisible CGI, the CGI that allows us to have a busy Soho street um, in which we get to film all sorts of things and all sorts of weather without ever having to close down Soho in London. I think Terry would love what we've done. Um, and I also think being Terry, if he were still here and still alive and I'd done all this, he would be thrilled that I would have been the one getting up really early in the morning, going to bed late at night and getting to think of nothing but good omens for four years while he would have written another eight books. Terry would be so proud. He, he would have given us such a hard time during <laughs> the, the entire process. I can't deny that. But he never asked Neil for anything. During their whole friendship, he not asked for nothing except for this one huge, massive the one thing. Enormous yeah. thing. Yeah, <laughs> That's taken four years of Neil's life. But what a request. Nobody could have loved Good Omens as much as Terry and Neil. If he'd been around to work on it with me, I would have you know, probably written the scripts and then handed them over to Terry and he would have given them back to me and I would have gone, oh my God, that thing you did, that's brilliant. He'd say, yes, Grasshopper, it is now 17% funnier. And it would have been. Um, and yes, I, I, but I missed him all through the writing process, particularly. I just wanted to, when I got stuck, I wanted to call him and say, Terry, what should I do? And whenever I did anything clever, I wanted to call him and say, you like this? Let me read you this bit I just wrote. Yeah, I think Neil missing Terry, th those telephone calls during Terry's lifetime, we all had them. I could be driving to London, having just said goodbye to Terry 15 minutes before an idea's entered his head and he wants to share it with you. And there was, a f there was only a few of us, that he, that a select few, that he would share those moments. But obviously with Neil, they, had good o they created Good Omens together and they had that relationship. And it, it must have been very difficult not having a Terry there. I, I can't imagine what that must have felt like for Neil. It was, um, it was so strange because Good Omens was ours. Yes. You know, the idea, we didn't do anything, even after Good Omens was done, we didn't do anything Good Omens related that we didn't do together. So if you look the forward and the afterward to the newest edition of Good Omens don't have any names on them. And the reason they don't have names on them is because Terry wrote half of one and sent it over to me. I wrote half of the other and sent it over to him. And then we both messed around with what the other one did and created the finished version. Um, we did 
back in 2006, Crowley and Aziraphale's New Year's resolutions. And Terry wrote about, uh, I think Terry wrote six of them, sent them over to me. I wrote eight of them and sent them back to him. So not to be outdone, he wrote another four and sent them back to me. And the great thing about it is even I couldn't remember who had written what until I went back into the emails and, and forensically reconstructed it. And I've had enormous fun with anybody who ever tells me they know who wrote what in Good Omens, giving them the list and saying, let me know. And so far, nobody has got it 100% right. Oh, it was absolutely deliberate. And it, but it began in a way of just looking at what I'd made in terms of what the scripts were and going, you know, it's very male. We have some fantastic women in here. We have uh, Anathema, we have Madame Tracy, we have Agnes Nutter, but overall, this is very male and there are a lot of men in it all the time. I want a female voice, just for balance. And it's all very, very English. So let's have a, an American voice for balance. So balance was the beginning thing, but honestly, I've enjoyed very, very much discovering that um, the sort of people who would not like Good Omens anyway, don't like the fact that Francis McDormand is voicing God. So I think it's great that the first thing that happens on the screen is that Francis McDormand talks and we see Adam and Eve and they are black, because if anybody has problems, we're only four and a half minutes in and they can stop watching there. Yeah.